Hey, Forrest here. Nothing like getting paid. And with ICCU's mobile app, I can deposit checks or accept Zelle payments so the money hits my account fast. I just wish there was an app for mowing the rest of these lawns. Right now, Lithia Ford of Boise is buying used vehicles. How much you want for the SUV? Uh, I don't know. Well, Lithia Ford will give you more than that. How much more? More than you think. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking you might get even more than that. See how much more you can get at Lithia Ford of Boise. When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. Ropaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coating solution. It's time for the Winston Venables Show with former Boise State linebacker and assistant coach, Winston Venables. The Winston Venables Show is brought to you by Progressive Wealth Management, enhancing wealth for this generation and the next. To speak to a trusted advisor or to learn more about Progressive Wealth Management's financial services, visit pwmmanagement.com. Now joining Winston Venable, here's BJ Reigns. Well, what's going on? Winston Venable going to join us in just a second here. He's getting his uh, microphone and camera situated. Uh, my name is BJ Reigns. We are down here live at the Myrtle Beach Invitational. We are in uh, South Carolina. Looking forward to this. Going to be a fun couple of days uh, here. We've got the, the, some of the teams walking by behind us. Uh, really looking forward to this. And, Flew in uh, with Boise State's team uh, yesterday, so uh, excited to uh, head over and watch some practice today, and then uh, we'll have uh, full coverage of the tournament. They open up tomorrow night at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Mountain Time against uh, Charlotte. So uh, are dealing with uh, somewhat spotty Wi-Fi on my end. I think Winston's having some Wi-Fi and sound issues on his end, so uh, we're going to try to make this work tonight. Um Jordan says, uh, let's go. You don't realize how much you miss Boise State content until you have to go without it for a day. <laughs> Appreciate that, Jordan. Yeah, we uh, did uh, have to take the day off yesterday uh, due to some timing and some travel and some other stuff that we had uh, going on. But uh, we're back. We're better than ever. We got uh, this show now. We have uh, BNN After Dark also returns after a week off tonight. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to announce our special guest here in a in a minute when Winston comes on. But uh, if you do have any questions or comments uh, for Winston Venable, football related, go ahead and get those uh, on and we will uh, get those uh, to Winston here in just a second. For whatever reason, his normal laptop, the uh, sound wasn't working and now he's switching over to his phone. So we'll get Winston on here momentarily uh, and then we will uh, talk some football. Boise State coming off the win against Nevada, has the game against Wyoming on Saturday. And as I said, I'm here in South Carolina for the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Went down and saw the beach this morning. Walked down, saw the beach briefly, and uh, the sun's finally coming out. So uh, we'll be over at practice today. And then, as I said, uh, full coverage of the tournament. We'll still have the shows, uh, you know, daily. Uh, talk some football as well from, from Myrtle Beach here, too. But obviously, I'm here to cover the basketball team. Uh, Win, Cindy, whenever you think you're ready, you can give me a thumbs up, and we'll, we'll try to bring you on. Uh, but uh, let's see. Uh, we got some questions coming in. We're spoiled. Appreciate that. Uh, well, thank you, Clint. Appreciate that. We got uh, Jordan saying a high of 59 in Myrtle Beach seems balmy. Put the sunscreen on. Uh, yeah, it's not uh, nothing uh, terrible. It's uh, actually not bad at all. But let's try to bring on our man, uh, Winston Venable. We'll do the best we can today. What's going on, Winston? Hey, PJ. Another Wednesday. Uh, we're, we got action after a little win, man. Big week for the Broncos, man. I'm looking, looking forward to this week, man. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. We, uh, I, I'm in the hotel lobby here, so my Wi-Fi is not the best. Uh, you're dealing, you're on your phone, I think, because your computer wasn't working. So we're gonna, we'll uh, get through this somehow here for uh, and talk some football uh, for the next little while. But uh, yeah, man, appreciate you coming on. Last week we were down at the, the Blue and Orange Store and had kind of the combo show, and then the uh, Broncos went and uh, won uh, in Nevada, and then now uh, you know we're, we're back uh, at Wyoming again this week, and uh, we're also back after a week off with BNN After Dark, man. Uh, I uh, am excited to let you announce our guest for BNN After Dark tonight. Hey, BNN After Dark. You know, there was something missing with my week last week, BJ, and it was just the consistent Wednesday night action that we've had. So I'm happy to, uh, to get it back rolling. We got a great guest, Jamar Taylor, coming on tonight. Uh, 
you know, kind of a later riser, man. Um, definitely got, you know, a, a, a bunch of ballers ahead of him that kind of led that track for him to go out there and do his thing. But, man, Jamar was a heck of a player. It's going to be fun to learn about what he's up to now. He's getting heavily back involved in the community. And, man, what a player he was out on the blue and then a heck of an NFL career. So it'll be awesome to reconnect with Jamar and see what he's up to. Yeah, second round pick uh, in 2013, I believe it was, by the Dolphins. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he, he, uh, actually right when I got to Boise, he was just getting ready to get drafted like the next month or two after I got here. So, and he was very gracious, didn't know me from, from the next guy down the street and uh, gave me some interviews and stuff, uh, when he got drafted, you know, right, right, uh, on draft night and even leading up to the draft, uh, even though I had just gotten to town and didn't cover any of his games. And so, um, yeah, he played for, uh, uh, obviously you see Cleveland here played for the dolphins, a number of other teams as well. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, part of that, uh, you know, DB. You and, and all those guys we've been talking to with George a couple weeks ago and all those guys. So I'm sure uh, he was part of that house, right? So he's going to have some stories as well. Oh, yeah. He's on that old Lata house that uh, that George Iloka was, you know, had some some pride with. You know, you had Jerron and Rex Life Raj and Jamar Taylor. So a bunch of ballers coming out of that house. Uh, we'll see if Jamar can bring any heat tonight and uh, give us some good stories. So looking forward to that. That'll be 8 p.m. tonight. Again, you got to be – That's by the way, I'm on the East Coast, Winston. That's 10 p.m. for me tonight. So that's going to be uh, – I got to have the uh, the coffee going here. But uh, if you are uh, wanting to watch Jamar Taylor, Jamar Taylor live on uh, BNN After Dark uh, tonight, all you have to do is be a subscriber of Bronco Nation News. So uh, go subscribe. Uh, whether you want to just do the $6.99 a month, you can do the uh, yearly – uh, one as well, and uh, that's I think seventy bucks for the whole year. And if you do it, you get to, to watch all the old BNN After Darks as well as uh, Jamar Taylor live tonight. And we'll pop your questions up on the screen. We have some fun with it, so looking forward to that uh, tonight. Uh, Winston, the game at Nevada. Uh, we don't need to spend a ton of time talking about it. It was forty-one to three. I mean, uh, it was a, it was kind of what we thought it would be. Uh, but uh, what'd yeah. you make of the the snow and the conditions? And and uh, they just kind of went down there and played some old school football and, and did what they had to do. Yeah, it, it was a it was a good game for the Broncos. I mean, obviously a big win did did their job, did what they were supposed to. But, um, you know, they started it off well. And I think Coach Avalos, you know, he keeps on talking about that rhythm, rhythm, rhythm and getting into rhythm. And it, it really matters, you know, starting the football game off, you know, with the defense, the offense, special teams. I mean, everybody, you know, when it comes down to even um, – you know, blocking the blocking the field goal early in the game, and uh, tail and slinging that thing to Billy Bowens to start things off. So they just had the momentum early, and they just kept running with it. And I thought uh, they did what they were supposed to. What what uh, you know, when you have a game like that where it's snowing and it's cold and the conditions are not good, uh, I would assume that favor. You know, does that favor the offense a little bit? I mean, the receivers know when they're cutting; uh, they know their breaks. The DBs don't. Uh, is there one side or the other that you know? You know, I guess it's harder to move the ball too if you, you're slipping around and stuff. But uh, is there a, is there a side of the ball you think has an advantage in the snow or, or the cold like that? Yeah, that that you know, that's a tough question, BJ, because you just you know, you just said like. The defensive backs, you know, those are – it's a reactive position, um, you know, but the wide receivers on the other end of that, are they getting out of their breaks? So it's probably pretty challenging for the the wide receiver and DB is as like a linebacker, safety, maybe more of that guy in the box. I mean, the weather doesn't matter a whole bunch, it, you know, about running and hitting and tackling and whether that's snow or rain, you still got to bring your two arms and bring your hips and tackle people. So, um on the defensive side, I always felt like the weather was not as much of a factor and probably more for the offense, throwing the ball, your footing, even as a running back. You know, what, what is this doing to my footwork? Am I able to make the same cut? So I would say probably more disadvantage on the uh, offensive side. Defense kind of gets to go around there and run around and, and hit people, but a um, little bit more to it on offense. Anything you took away from that game? I mean, obviously the defense, and you know, I know uh, Nevada statistically doesn't have a very good offense, and then you throw in the weather. So obviously they struggled to really move the ball. But uh, anything defensively, uh, you know, that stood out to you? We, we keep seeing, uh, you know, the, the obviously the, the uh, next man up mentality. You know, they didn't have 
Washington yeah. or, or Noah in that game. Uh, we already know about Tarlis yeah. and some of the other guys that were out, but uh, obviously they're, they're going down the depth chart a little bit here and, and guys keep stepping up. Uh, but uh, I mean, after that BYU game, I think they were a little uh, ticked off, you know, giving up 500 plus yards and wanted to obviously show kind of who they are. And that was a good opponent for them to do that in Nevada. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's so interesting, man, that, we've said it before these are such valuable reps for a guy like andrew simpson to go on there against a team like nevada and run around and make tackles and get and make mistakes you know and learn from them and grow from them so um yeah seeing all these young guys out there playing i mean it's just going to help down the line because you know a guy like andrew simpson might be called upon in a championship game or a big time bowl game and it's going to be the the reps he got at nevada or is what prepared him for that. And I mean, so just a defensively, I think towards the end of the game, you started seeing some of the starters come out and you got some younger guys back in there. And I just think it's awesome to be put in that situation where, you know, you handle enough business as a team and you get younger guys to come in and play. It lifts them up, keeps them engaged and being a part of this team. And then also gives them valuable reps for when their number is going to be called upon down the line. Somebody's asking if there's any more intro on Dimitri's status. You know, I tweeted over the weekend that he was likely out for the season. And then there's kind of some semantics going on where they're uh, tweeting about him being out there and all this stuff at practice. And uh, we'll see what happens. But I stand by it being a fairly serious uh, shoulder injury. Um, if they want to, you know, do something to, to try to get him out there for a little bit, may, you know, maybe they're going to do that just to, to kind of try to get me back. I have no idea. But uh, weird situation. Not sure what's going <laughs> on there. Um, but, uh, you know, not, you know. Uh, not rooting for anyone to be injured by any means. Hope to me, I hope I am wrong and Dimitri can get out there and, and play. But uh, just based on reporting what I was told and that it was a, a shoulder injury that was, uh, you know, fairly severe and that, uh, you know, that he was already looking ahead to next season is what I was told. So we'll, we'll see. And as I said, hope I'm wrong on this one. Don't like to be wrong. Would love to see him play, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of, uh, I don't know what's going on there. If they're just playing games by saying he's out there, or what a practice, uh, obviously probably don't want Wyoming and the other teams to know the status of guys. So we'll, we'll see on that moving forward. But uh, DJ Shram, somebody's asking about uh, Winston. Obviously he continues to uh, continues to step up as well. Yeah. Football player, man, kind of, that special teamer that's really starting to blossom and kind of that late bloomer that not many people knew about, know about maybe if you're tuned in on special teams, you got a good idea who DJ Shram is, but um, most significant reps he's gotten, you know, this and, and it's, it's, uh, it's awesome seeing that dude run on out there. And, you know, he's been one of those guys that's been pretty consistent. If I go back to through these games, I mean, I don't think DJ's had many injuries and he's kind of been one of those guys on defense that's, you know, just having that steady eddy year where he's just production, man, just tackles and, you know, living in the backfield a little bit. And it's been awesome to see the linebackers play. Yeah, he had to move over, I think, and play uh, the other spot in that game with uh, Noah not being in there, as you said. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, was kind of one of those fun snowy cold games they just said it was i think uh, scott matlock said it was uh you know kind of backyard ball right and yeah uh, is that is that weather games kind of uh we've seen in the past those guys the home games where they come out with no shirts on for the warm-ups and stuff when it's really cold i mean is that uh did you like playing in the cold or do you think the guys uh, get uh, fired up about that well we might have lost winston now he's sideways on the screen we'll see if we can uh uh we'll we'll try to get winston back here i'm not sure uh winston is winston you're frozen and you're sideways so uh go on out and come back in we'll we'll get you back on uh i will uh thank a few of the sponsors while we try to get winston back you just got to turn your sideways can't your your camera is sideways winston so turn your camera the other way and we'll uh We'll get you back on in just a second. We are broadcasting from the mobile uh, studios, the Cutwater Canned Cocktail mobile studios today. We're at uh, the Myrtle Beach Invitational in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Looking forward to covering Boise State here the next uh, few days. And we're still talking football, even though we're here, but uh, appreciate it. And tonight on being in After Dark, make sure you have a uh, Cutwater Canned Cocktail while you're watching the show tonight. More than 30 flavors of premix premium cocktails so i appreciate uh, cut water canned cocktails rowpaint.com our title sponsor check them out power and people pride in painting they have all their deals going on right now especially the one down in twin falls 23 percent off your order if you use the uh promo code uh bnn twin 23 bnn twin 23 is the promo code and you can uh check that out 
and um, you will uh, you get a 23% off your order. So um, Lithia Ford of Boise, as we get Winston back on here in just a second, Lithia Ford Boise there. Uh, make sure you check out their deal going on right now, lithiafordboise.com. You can search the inventory and you can go uh, look for your vehicle and then find the vehicle you want and go check it out uh, and test drive it and be on your way. That's what the Reigns family did. Saw the truck I wanted online, went to their location, test drove it, bought it, and was out the door in a couple hours. So go check out Lithia Ford of Boise. And again, they'll buy your used car, make a cash offer on the spot, even if you don't want to buy from them, you're just looking to sell your car. Go do that at LithiaFordBoise.com. And of course, ICCU, the official bank of Bronco Nation News and the Reigns family, Idaho Central Credit Union. More than 500,000 Idahoans have made the switch. You can too at uh, ICCU.com. We'll try to bring uh, Winston Venable back in here. There he is. You you were sideways. You were frozen. Not sure what was going on, Winston, but uh, you're back, man. Uh, we were. I was just talking about the uh, the weather and kind of those cold games. Uh, we see some of those games where the, the football team comes out and has their shirts off for the warm-ups and things like that, you know, intimidation or whatever. I mean, is the uh, cold weather in those snowy games, is that a, a fun game to play in? Um, you know, you ask, you ask Antoine Murray back in the day. We got to get him on the BNN after dark, man, because he was one of the ringleaders of uh, – taking the shirt off for warmups and he was a Florida boy. So he brought a little uh, toughness all the way from Florida out to Boise. But yeah, sometimes like, you know, you scrap some of the technique stuff and it's just kind of that backyard brawl, man. Um, it gets, it, the game gets a little sloppy sometimes. So I think that's probably what, you know, Matt Locke and some of those guys are talking about where, you know, it's not always going to look pretty, but you got to play the game. You got to battle it out and, you know, it might be a little dirty, a little ugly out there along with the weather. So um, it can be fun. And, and then I think sometimes it can be, get me into that locker room and in a hot shower, you know, immediately. Well, let's see here. Love seeing the big time leadership from Matlock on defense. Uh, let's see. Um, another comment shouting out DJ Shram turned out to be very instrumental in the energy brings the blue collar mentality to the team. Uh, going to Wyoming on Saturday as we, as we turn this ahead, Winston, uh, I looked at the last three times they've played Wyoming and the score is like 23, you know, 13, 17 to nine, you know, 20 to 17. It's kind of these low scoring, uh, you know, grinded out uh, battles every time you play a Wyoming, isn't it? Uh Oh, Uh Oh, Winston froze again. I left him speechless. I left Winston speechless. We'll try to uh, get Winston back on here. Uh, he is on his phone because he was having some problems with his, uh, his, uh, for some reason there was no, uh, sound coming from his can his, uh, computer. So he had to switch to his phone today. And obviously that's proving to, uh, be a struggle. So we apologize for that. We will get him on here, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, if you do have any other questions or comments, we can get to those. Um, uh, let's see here. We got some other comments coming in. Somebody was asking about the Myrtle beach invitational being on TV, uh, yes, it is. Uh, it'll be on the ESPN networks tomorrow night is on, uh, what is it? Tomorrow night on ESPN news, seven o'clock on ESPN news. And then the game, uh, I think is ESPN U on uh, either Friday or and, and Sunday. We'll, we'll, I think it depends if they win or lose. So we'll, uh, check that out. Uh, let's see here. Quick question with Winston gone. The sports word buzzing mountain West basketball, big night for the mountain West. Yeah, how about last night, uh, UNLV beats Dayton, who I think was ranked 21st. UNLV beats them. And then you had San Diego State putting it to uh, – oh, yeah, by the way, I said 7 p.m. It's 7 p.m. here in South Carolina. It's 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Thank you, David, for that. I'm still uh, jet-lagged and not uh, not realizing that. Yeah, 5 o'clock back in Boise the next two nights. If they win tomorrow, if they win tomorrow it's 5 o'clock on Friday as well in the semifinals. Oh, yeah, you had uh, – UNLV beat Dayton. You had, I know, San Diego State handled Stanford pretty well. Uh, so, yeah, there have been some uh, interesting scores. Winston will give this uh, another shot here. Uh, I was explaining to folks the issues today, so we're just kind of we're just kind of getting through it today. And, and if it uh, messes up again, we'll probably just say see you. But uh, what what uh, what do you make moving forward against Wyoming? And as I was saying, it seems like every time you play Wyoming, it's going to be a low scoring, tough grind it out type of game. I mean, the last three years, the scores are like 20 to 17, 17 to nine, you know, 23, 13. I mean, yeah. uh, what is it? What is it about playing Wyoming? It's, it's usually a low scoring type of game. Yeah, I think it's their style, right? And they're, they're very, very well coached. Craig bowl over there is 
always has those guys prepared. And I think it's just kind of, you know, that honestly it's, it's their little mantra, their little motto over there, that cowboy tough, man. I mean, I think that they have a culture and a, um, you know, an environment where they pride themselves on being tough. And I think they always have a good game plan and typically, and I don't know, I mean, you could go back, but seems like, you know, there's been some late Wyoming games. I don't know. Last time we had Wyoming early, maybe, I don't know, two years ago, maybe it was the first game of the season and I just can't remember, but um, it seems to be that there is some later games, some weather, um, and they've just been a battle. So I don't know who Wyoming views as their, their rivals or whatnot, but you can, you can see what it is, right? They're five and one in conference or six and one in conference Boise States, you know, undefeated in conference and that there it goes right there. So, I mean, I think that we've had these type of matchups in the past where both teams have had some pretty good records. Both teams are kind of blue collar, similar teams um, in the sense of like how they go about their business. They're both kind of that tough, tough opponent. And I think, when you got those type of teams that go against each other, that's what you get. You get some of these low scoring battles. Yeah, it was two years ago. It was like December twelfth or something. Remember the season started late because of COVID. It was that, that weird season yep. with no fan, no fans or limited fans. And that was the one where it was, yeah, blizzard the entire game. And and I went out to my car and had yeah. like a foot of snow on my car trying to uh get back to the hotel afterwards. Uh so yeah, it does seem like it snows almost every year. It's cold, it's November, so um, yeah, and, and you know, it, you know what you're going to get too, right? They like to run the football. Obviously, you're going to get a, a solid defense. It's not going to give up a ton, but offensively, uh, it obviously starts uh, with the run. And I know they had their uh, big running back from last year, uh, uh, Xavier Valade, transferred to Arizona State. But they got another guy in there that's pretty yeah. good. And uh, as the coaches were saying this week, I mean, you know what you're getting with Wyoming—a a good physical offensive line and and a you know downhill rushing attack. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think they get they get a little bit all right looks like we're uh we're gonna call it oh well sorry about that guys uh not sure oh there maybe he's back you back winston you're sideways but you're back are you there Nope, that's all right. We're going to call it with Winston. I apologize for that. I've got a little time if folks have some questions or things they want to talk about. But uh, uh, as I was saying, uh, yeah, Wyoming is 5-1 uh, and one in Mountain West play. Boise State is 6-0. and oh. Boise State can clinch not only uh, a spot in the championship game, they can clinch hosting the championship game uh, if, they, uh, if they win this game. They can clinch hosting the championship game. So a lot on the line, obviously, if they want to try to – win the championship game, uh, Winston, uh, they got a chance to not only host, you know, win the, you know, be in the game, but if they win on Saturday, they, they host the championship game, which I know is a big goal going into the season. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about that one earlier, BJ. It's one of those, like, you want your players to know that and you also don't want to put too much pressure on them, but it's one of those like, Hey, this is a huge, huge game. And if you got a mature enough group and you got a group that, you know, can stay focused on the task at hand because Wyoming is the task at hand. But yeah, I mean, the reality is, is like, yo, knock this one out. And we're sitting real nice going into the and remainder of the season. But, um, you know, it's one game, game at a time. I Last week I said not to look too far ahead and, and they can't. But I think it, it is reality where it's a heightened sense of urgency where it's like, hey, guys, we can go and take care of business. Things are going to be looking good for us, you know, postseason here. And obviously, uh, that's that's the goal when the season starts, hosting the Mountain West Championship game, being in it and hosting it on the blue. And you think about being two and two, Winston, and the, you know the the coaching change at offensive coordinator, the quarterback transfers. I mean, we were wondering if they were even going to get to a bowl game, and here they are with a chance to host the championship game with a with a win on Saturday. I mean, what uh, what is it? What does these last six weeks, I guess, say about this this team and this program, where where they were and where they are now? Yeah, I don't think they wavered, man. I know that they had to make some coaching changes and, you know, and all that type of stuff and, you know, quarterbacks transfer. And that's going to happen every year from other programs where guys transfer and maybe it throws a little wrinkle in the system. But uh, just perseverance, dedication, hard work. I mean, you could list all sorts of things that, you know, can represent this 2022 Bronco team. And and really they just – they have, have – each week and 
You're sideways, Winston. I don't know what's going on with your camera today. All right. Well, we, uh, we'll see Winston on being in after dark tonight. Oh, now he's trying to come back. Oh, nope. Maybe not. Um, but uh, appreciate Winston, and we'll get him on being in after dark tonight, 8 o'clock again. Our guest tonight is Jamar Taylor. You don't want to miss that tonight. Jamar Taylor is our guest at uh, 8 p.m. on uh, being in after dark. you got to be a subscriber of Bronco Nation News, and uh, we got some deals going on right now. If you sign up, we'll give you a free gift card to the Blue and Orange store. Uh, we'll give you a round of golf. We'll give you whatever you want. Just sign up for a subscription. We'd love to have you. If you are watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not watching on YouTube, if you're on Facebook or Twitter, uh, YouTube is a much easier way to comment. We cannot get your comments on Twitter. If you reply on Twitter, we do not see them. So if you want to be heard, seen on the show, you got to be on the YouTube uh, stream of the shows, which means go to youtube.com slash Bronco Nation News and click the little button to subscribe. And we would love to have you hopefully uh, subscribing to our channel. And that's where we post all the press conference videos and all the videos and uh, info that we'll be having from uh, – um, the Myrtle beach tournament here and all that kind of stuff. Uh, happy late birthday. Hey, thank you. Kendra. Appreciate that. Kendra's a uh, big Boise state basketball fan. Appreciate her for, uh, had a chance to, uh, meet her and uh great BSU basketball fan. So uh, appreciate the, uh, late happy birthday. Got to spend it yesterday with, uh, all of your friends, uh, flying to Myrtle beach. That was a, a lot of fun yesterday. Uh, have you tried to get Jeremiah Dickey on the show? Uh, yes, we have had him on the show numerous times. Uh, Josh, we can try to get him on again. Uh, Jordan wants the Mulligan Championship versus Fresno at home. Yeah, it'd be a similar situation where Boise State beat Fresno in the first matchup, and then they have to play him again uh, in the the second game in the championship. And obviously, this would be a much different, much different uh, Fresno State team if they have uh, Jake Hayner at quarterback. So, um, but we are here at the uh, Myrtle Beach Invitational. You can see there's Coach Rice walking by right there, uh, heading off for uh, meetings or whatever else they have going on. Um, but uh, we are uh, in the lobby, and I saw Steve Prohm, uh, the old Iowa State coach, who's now at Murray State. Uh, he was, he was walking by, and and uh, we've had everybody kind of doing their doing their things. And yeah, you can see Coach Rice uh, back there looking for his looking for his room key or his phone or something. But uh, we are uh, down here in the lobby, and we're having a lot of fun. And and uh, we're going to be going to practice uh, later uh, today. They have two practices. They have a uh, private practice at a local like high school or gym and then they get an open shoot around type thing in the arena to try to check out the arena for the tournament and uh see what that's going to be like for tomorrow and just do some kind of shooting and stuff they'll do all their private scouting and all that back at like a local high school but uh they are allowing me to go to both so we will have plenty of coverage uh from practice we're going to do some interviews somebody's at oh derek said is uh, charlotte a must win tomorrow uh i mean you should you should win the game i mean you're ranked higher than them um your favorite i think by seven or eight i mean yeah that's a game you uh need to win tomorrow to, to open up the tournament and that sets up you know a second round game hopefully on friday against uh you know potentially loyola chicago who's a top 100 ken palm team and that'd be a quad two game i believe and so that's a, a big opportunity um and then you know and, and you should match up you know about even with them and if you can win that and get to the championship, you know, you could play a, a ranked Texas A&M team or, or Colorado team that just beat Tennessee. So um, the way the bracket sets up nicely, it, uh, Boise State should hopefully be able to, uh, you know, get some wins. I mean, the, the big thing in these tournaments is you want to go two and one. However you can do it, you, I mean, you want to go three and oh, you want to win the tournament. But if you can't win the tournament, you want to go two and one uh, at a minimum in the tournament, whether that's, you know, you lose the first game, win the next two, whether you, you know, go one, you know, win, loss, win, however it works, you want to go two and one in the tournament, go home feeling good. Obviously, you'd like to win the last game on the third day, too. Um, that would certainly be uh, be something. We got uh, Abe Jackson walking by the uh, radio uh Radio play-by-play -play extraordinaire. He'll be uh, joining us uh, tomorrow uh, pregame. Uh, we got our new segments with Abe Jackson every uh, pregame show now. So uh, that'll be about uh, 6.15 or so uh, Eastern time. So about 4.15 because the game's at 5 o'clock tomorrow Mountain time. So we'll be on the air about 4.15 uh, with Abe Jackson to kick off our uh, Lithia Florida Boise pregame show. Uh, heading over today to work on the location. Not sure if we're going to be courtside or where they're going to have us. So I will have uh, some more details on that uh, to later uh, tomorrow, I guess, on where we're going to be. But we will have uh, live pregame, postgame shows, uh, interviews with Coach Rice players. They're going to join us one-on-one uh, -on -one with us and uh, join us uh, after the uh, after the game. So we are uh, really looking forward to uh, the coverage here and appreciate uh, 
Nate Lowry and all of Boise State's staff and their coaches and everybody for letting us hang out here and, and get some good access and some good insight here uh, for the tournament. So, uh, again, BNN After Dark is coming up uh, tonight. Our guest is Jamar Taylor. If you want to join us, we would love to have you. I'm trying to scroll down to find the graphic here as I stall. There it is. Jamar, Jamar Taylor, being in After Dark. It's 8 o'clock tonight. Got to be a subscriber of Bronco Nation News. So uh, if you have not uh, watched one of these being in After Dark shows, they're a lot of fun. You get, uh, you get Winston Venable kind of uh, having a beverage or two and telling some stories with his old buddies, and they end up being, uh, ends up being a lot of fun. So uh, looking forward to that tonight with uh, Winston and Johnny, uh, 8 p.m. Mountain Time. And uh, Jamar Taylor will join us live, and you can ask your questions and bring that as well. And uh, as I said, we are here in Myrtle Beach, so we'll have live uh, shows, pregame, postgame shows, all that good stuff uh, throughout the week. We appreciate Idaho Central Credit Union for uh, sponsoring our road trip coverage. So uh, please go support Idaho Central Credit Union. We appreciate them for uh, sponsoring us uh, and helping us uh, get on the road with these uh, road trips because it was not a a cheap ticket to get out here uh, to Myrtle Beach. So uh, appreciate everybody for checking us out. Uh, Since Winston's uh, having some computer problems, we'll go ahead and and, uh, shut this thing down. Uh, No more comments are coming in, I see. But, uh, again, uh, we'll be out of practice today. We'll have uh, more for uh, uh, coverage, we're going to get an interview with Coach Rice. We'll get that up on the YouTube channel, a uh, player or two. We'll try to get some highlights from practice, things like that, and, and uh, try to let you uh, see what it's like here in Myrtle Beach. The sun is uh, finally out. I'll see if I can turn the uh, the sun is out. You got the palm trees. There's a palm tree. There you go. So we got the sun out. We got the palm trees. And I uh, even made it down to the uh, the beach today. Even walked down to the beach. And, uh, I knew my mom would scold me if I came all the way to all the way here and didn't go see the beach. So I went and did that and, and uh, having a good morning here uh, in Myrtle Beach. So appreciate all of you. Appreciate all of our great sponsors, uh, rowpaint.com, ICCU, Lithia, Florida, Boise, uh, the Blue and Orange Store, of course, uh, TCS, uh, Boise Dentistry Co., Bowsher Real Estate, United Commercial Insurance, uh, Ridley's Family Markets, uh, goes down the line, Timberstone Golf Course. So uh, thanks to all of our great sponsors. We really do appreciate you for allowing us to uh, be here and do these shows. And and hopefully all of you will go support the sponsors and, and help them out. And we do have a really cool announcement coming. I'm not quite ready to announce it, but um, we do have a really cool announcement coming uh, for those of you that are getting set to renew your, uh, renew your uh, subscription, which is going to happen on November 30th, December 1st, December 2nd for like 300 of you. Uh, if you renew it for a second year, we're going to have a pretty cool uh, contest that we're doing. So uh, stay tuned for that. So appreciate everybody for uh, checking us out. Sorry for the technical difficulties with Winston. And I don't think I've got the greatest Wi-Fi either. So we will uh, try to improve that for the next day's show. I uh, apologize for that. But uh, you can see Winston in all of you tonight on BNN After Dark at 8 o'clock. So have a great uh, rest of your day. And we'll have uh, full coverage coming from Myrtle Beach. A little later today, Boise State here for the basketball tournament play charlotte tomorrow and as i said we'll get to coach rice interview and some stuff up later today uh have a great day talk to you later bronconationnews.com